Hey guys, what's up? This is JRP77 from Change Team Games, and I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to make a terrain in Blender. Now, before we get started, I'd like to address a few things. First of all, I got my keycaster working again. You can see it on this side. I'm going to keep it on this side rather than the middle, so just look over to the left side of your screen and you'll be able to see that. Also, you notice the keycaster is a tad smaller. I've turned up the settings all the way, and it's because I'm working on a higher monitor. I'm looking into getting a better screencaster so that it's... Um, not visible while I'm actually working, but you can see it when I'm after the edited product is finished. So now let's jump into terrain building. So basically all I've got here is a simple project and I'm gonna show you guys the first way and this is probably the way I would not do it, but I'm just gonna show you guys this just because it's helpful to know how to do this. So let's say that you, there's two ways. You have a procedural way and then you have a sculpting way. Procedural is based off a texture that is generated through the Blender workflow, and it's pretty good. Um, but we are gonna be using that one in more detail, but what you would do in order to sculpt it is you would just go into sculpt mode, and actually you would go into edit mode first, and you would like scale on the z-axis and then scale out, and then go into sculpt mode and add vertices and such, but we're not gonna do that we are going to do procedural based. So, the first thing I need to do is just delete the subject. And just to show you guys, I'm just using, starting off with a brand new project. I'm gonna hit command N so I can relay this startup file. All right, so now I'm gonna to go to file, uh, user preferences, and now I'm gonna to go to my add-ons tab. Now, this is important because this is basically what runs the procedural base. Um, so what you have to do is you have to type in A-N-T, not A-M-N-T, Ant, and then you'll see Add Mesh Ant Landscape. You have to select that, so you just click on this checkbox right here, save user settings so it always loads up when you start it up, and then click X. I'm sorry I didn't get much into the sculpting, I realize that now, but I'm going to show you guys a little bit more into sculpting and some more control in a minute. So now that we've got this, I'm going to delete the cube, and while we're at it, I'm going to delete the camera and the lamp. All right, so now, I am going to jump, just rotate like this, and hit Shift A, Mesh, and you'll see we have like a little plug-in right here. I'm gonna click right here, so I add a landscape. Now this is important, don't, do, don't scale it yet, don't do anything, because this menu is what runs the landscape. So I'm pretty sure you can go here and go to history, but just to be safe, I like to do it without scaling. So I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to look at these different options. So we've got mesh update, which basically just shows your mesh in real time. You've got sphere, which is a really cool effect. You can make some really cool rocks and stuff like that. Like if you turn down the subdivisions, you can make some really cool like meteorites, I guess. But we are going to leave this at the default value of 64 and check uncheck smooth. Now we have smooth. So this is if you want to have a terrain that's so like a realistic terrain or if you want to have like a flat terrain so you can see your vertices. You've got subdivision which is basically your quality. I'm going to leave this at 100 just so that we have a lot of detail to work with and then we have mesh size. Now this is where you can play around with your size and stuff like that. I personally do not like to do this. I like to, whoopsie daisies. I just messed it up so you can see I'm going to try to go to history. And you can see that I can't do anything. I can't even get the layout back. So it's a bit annoying. So we hit Shift A, Mesh, Landscape, and you'll see it just reloads our menu. I'm gonna leave this mesh size at two, just because it's small enough. What I like to do is I like to have it set at two, and then once I'm done, I like to scale it up. Now we have this. This is like our almost our type. We've got multi-fractal, rigid and fractal. We've got a bunch of different options. I'm going to go with turbulence right now, just because that one looks really cool for like chasms and stuff like this, um, and I really like it. So I'm going to keep this, and I'm going to keep my base. I'm going to set my basis to parallel. So basically, that's just this is just the 
the base texture it starts off with. You can have Perlin, you can have new Perlin, um, but Blender and Perlin I usually work with. You can have Cell Noise, which you can get some pretty cool effects with that. You can have Vernoy, which if you play it around with the high neck, it'll look cool. I'm gonna stick with Blender though. You've got your random seed. Now this is really important because if anybody goes into Blender now and inputs these settings, they will automatically get your terrain. And you don't want that if you're making a game. You want it to be unique. So you use random seed. So I'm gonna set this to uh, four. Four looks really cool. Now because this is random, nobody else can use this. So that's what I generally use. You can change your noise size so that it's either there's either more hills or less hills. But generally you wanna keep this at the default value of one. You've got your depth which is basically how high your chasms are and how low your, how high your mountains are and how low. It's like detail almost. I don't know how to explain it. And then you also have hard, which I would always leave on. You can get some cool effects with it. Um, cursor to center. Whoops, I keep doing this. Um, and you'll see that I've already messed up. Because I set the cursor like so, I am now unable to get this back. So it's a simple fix, you just delete it and then you add it again and it reloads it with your settings, but honestly, just be aware of that. I'm gonna keep it at hard just because I really like the look it gives. You know what, I'm gonna keep it off. Uh, I'm gonna keep it hard. Now, you can also invert the texture. Basically, it doesn't necessarily flip it. If I go to top view, you can see that Inverting it doesn't necessarily flip it, it just flips the noise colors. So basically when you're making noise textures, you have black and you have white. Um, white is the low areas and black is the high areas. So you'll see that if I invert this, you'll see that the high areas are right there and the low areas are right there. But that's the white. It's basically just flipping the black and the white on that. So that's cool. All right, so now we have like your height and your plateau and stuff like that. You can see that the height does have a threshold. I'm gonna set this to like four, and you can see that it's already made a cool effect. You can get some like icebergs and stuff like that, but that's not generally how you want your mountain. So the way you fix that is I'm gonna set this to four, is you set your plateau, and we'll get to that in a minute. I'm gonna keep this at 0.5 though. You get your offset, which is basically where the noise texture starts. So you can lower it in the ground and you can get like an island almost. And I am going to do like that, cause that looks cool. You can also set your plateau. So if I lower this, you can see that we start to flatten out at the top right there. And that's always a nice thing to know. I'm gonna reset this though, just because I want to have a mountain in this. You can also have your sea level which you can get some cool effects with that. You can actually like move down and such. I like to keep mine at the default value, zero. Then you got fall off, which is basically how it goes from the low areas to the high areas. So you can have, like you have type two, you have Y. You'll notice that the color changes on Y. That is because it actually recognizes that this is, um, you're gonna wanna see this from the outside, so it recognizes that and it flips it. But you can see right now our normals are messed up. If I go over here to my display tab, is it display? No, it's shading, and I click on backface culling. You'll see that you can actually see the vertices, but you can see through them, and you don't want that in a map. You can, and if I go underneath, you can see it's like a terrain like that. But we don't want this if we're making a map. We want this to be able to where we can see um, the map from the outside, but not from the inside. Um, unless you have a cave or something like that. So I'll get to that in a minute. All right, so now that we've talked about those, we also have strata, which you get a type one strata. This is basically like how your cliffs will look. And I like that, that looks cool. And you can also set how high the strata, like you can add layers of strata, like that. All right, that looks cool. So we basically just procedurally generated a island. Um, you could have your water right here, and that looks really cool. So now that I'm done, 
I am going to, what I like to do is I like to hit plus and I like to give this a name and I'm just going to call this terrain one. So now if I ever have to go back, I can always, I can always delete this shift a landscape. You'll see it automatically does it. But if I had gone like, like if I had accidentally, like Blender, Blender had crashed, you just save it here and you can always delete these presets later. All right, so now let's flip these normals so that we can see it from the outside. I'm gonna hit tab to go into edit mode, then shading UV, flip direction of the normals. That looks good. So now, how do I add detail to this? Because this is pretty procedural, but nothing in life is really procedural if you know what I mean. Everything has like a few random things on it. So let's scope these details out right here just to make it a little bit less procedural. I'm not gonna worry about plugging in my pen and touch tablet for this just because this is gonna be really short. So I'm just gonna show you guys in here. So basically, this is your sculpt menu. You've got your tools up here, which you can play around with. I'm not gonna go into too much detail with them, but the one you're gonna wanna use most of the time is sculpt draw. Now, if you hit shift F, that gives you your size, and if you hit F, that gives you your, I mean, shift F is your strength, F is your size. So I'm gonna rotate this. And you'll notice we've got a few areas right here that are really bumpy. So I am going to go back in and you'll notice that because my strength is so high, it's actually, well, getting rid of it. So I'm going to bump my strength down to like 0.2, just so I can get these areas out, just ever so slightly. I'm gonna to go to my flatten tool Now that's working. Um, and you can see I'm just going in and basically getting rid of these areas. Now you'll notice that we do have some changes over here. Now this is because of Blender's um, base sculpting mode. Basically what it does is it always turns on symmetry first, which is really annoying. So always make sure you go and you turn off symmetry when you're doing this. And then you can start sculpting out details and stuff like that. So now we just get a few of these flat, uh, like that one. But you can see that now we are starting, and we can also flatten out this area back here, this area back here. All right, so that's basically a terrain. Now, you'll notice we have 10,000 vertices. Most game engines will be able to handle 10,000 vertices. But let's say that you have a ton of objects in the scene. It's really annoying. You can always go in and go to add modifier, decimate, unsubdivide, and then you can do some like some level of detail groups and stuff like that. Now, you can, if you want to learn more about the decimate modifier and how you use it, there will be a link in the description for the decimate modifier as well as a link to the displace modifier, which is basically all this landscape is doing. This landscape modifier, or this landscape object is literally just a displace modifier. It doesn't show up here, but it does technically, because that's what it's working off of. It's working off of a texture to give it its basis. You cannot see this texture sadly, so you can't go like edit it in Photoshop. But it's a nice thing to know. So if you'd like to go learn about the decimate and the displace modifier, go look at the links in the description. Um, that's basically all there is to it. All you have to do now is really just go file, export, and then save it as a model file of your choosing. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you'd like to see more, don't forget to check out our channel. Um, don't forget to subscribe to that channel so that you'll never miss a tutorial. And then don't forget to like this video, share it with friends. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.